All right, we will get started. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today, whether you are on the Zoom call or logging in on Facebook Live. Uh, this is our 26th annual uh, general meeting, and I am Kat, the Outreach Coordinator with Ontario Streams and the host of the AGM today. Uh, before we begin, I do have a few housekeeping notes to share. Uh, we are recording this session and it will be posted later on our YouTube channel. So if you do have to leave or check off, uh, log off for any reason, you'll be able to check it out later on YouTube. If you have any questions about the information presented, feel free to use the chat feature in the Zoom meeting. Um, you can post the question for everyone to see. That way, if people have the same questions, they can see they're being asked. Uh, as well, if you're tuning in on Facebook, you can write in the chat or the comments there, and one of us will be moderating that as well. Um, we also will share our email at the end of the uh, presentation. So if you've got any other questions you want to go into a little more in depth with, um, feel free to send us an email. Uh, if you have a, a specific question to message somebody else that's in the room, um, you are able to select uh, to uh, contact a specific person rather than everyone. So if you do have little uh, questions or comments to make, uh, feel free to use that function. And if you have any technical questions today, uh, just reach out and send me a direct message, Kat, uh, via the chat function, and we'll try to help you out there. So here's our little agenda for today. Uh, we have a couple of us staff that are ready to do some, uh, some presentations about our, our financials, achievements, uh, some more in-depth program and project information as well. We do have a guest speaker, Steve Varga here today, uh, who will do an overview of wetlands in York Region. And then we'll finish things off with me, the outreach coordinator, uh, to do some awards and recognition, as well as looking forward to 2022, seeing what's next. Uh, typically, our annual general meeting is an in-person half-day event. Uh, so unfortunately, we're still living in these uncertain times and we're here for the second time doing this virtually. We are hoping to wrap things up around 11 or 11.15 this morning. Again, it's being recorded, so if you can't stay for the whole time, you'll be able to catch it again later on our YouTube channel. Uh, as we are uh, all very small on your screen today, uh, we thought we'd just do a quick overview of who the team at Ontario Streams is. And we currently have seven staff. Uh, to start, we have Doug, who is our restoration ecologist and general manager. Uh, Doug is in charge of all things Ontario Streams, uh, whether it's behind the scenes, admin and HR, uh, financials, as well as still spending time out in the field getting projects on the ground done. Next up, we have Crystal, who is our project biologist and field supervisor. Crystal manages most of the projects that we have in York Region, uh, as well as some of the HR financial admin stuff too. We also have Mark, who is uh, working with us as a partnership specialist, as well as a senior biologist. So Mark manages a lot of our uh, relationships with different organizations organizations and different programs. Uh, he does a lot of work looking at Jefferson Salamander, Atlantic Salmon, Brook Trout, uh, and working again with those partner organizations. I am Kat and I'm the Outreach Coordinator and my job is mostly uh, working with uh, developing and delivering programming, whether it's in virtual, um, in, in person or virtual, uh, to all different community groups. Next up, we have Corey, who is our GIS specialist. GIS is Geographic Information Systems, uh, and Corey works on all of our mapping using computer um, and other technology. Maddie is our newest project biologist, and she is coordinating projects across Peel Region. Uh, and she is also one of our habitat technicians from this summer who uh, we've hired on to continue uh, on our team. And then last but not least, we have Eric, who is again one of our habitat technicians from the summer that we have kept on uh, as our data entry management technician. Uh, so Eric is doing a lot of 
nitty gritty uh, data stuff uh, for us, trying to help us get a little more organized and be able to better understand our data in the past uh, to help us forecast and, and be a little bit prepared going forward um, with our projects. So on that note, we are going to switch it over to Doug. Uh, as again, he's our general manager and he is going to share uh, some information with us about uh, reflecting on his 25 years of service with Ontario Streams as well as a 2022 or a 2020 financial overview. So over to Doug. Thanks a lot. I just, I was dropped and I just <laughs> reconnected again. So I'm just trying to get everything straight here. Uh, thanks, Kat. So I don't know what you had just said. I missed the entire thing. Um, so I'll start here with this picture on the left. I just wanted to let everybody know what's going on here. Um, I threw a party for our staff and past full-time staff, um, whoever wants to come every summer. And at that uh barbecue, my staff, prior staff, and a few friends all chipped in and contributed to buy me this wonderful fishing kayak as a uh, present for being with Ontario Streams for 25 years, uh, which is, um, I'm very thankful for. It catches fish, it works great. Um, so I just wanted to say a few words about uh, being here for 25 years as I never got the, I never did say anything at that barbecue. So I feel very fortunate that I've had the opportunity to work with this great organization for 25 years. Although there have been many steep learning curves and many highs and lows, Ontario Streams has provided me with a chance to learn and grow along with the organization. I'm impressed with all of the great work we have done from creating large wetland habitats in Ringwood, Rouge Park, and Richmond Hill to the removal of online ponds and barriers in Caledon. Every year our staff and volunteers have rehabilitated kilometers of streams and work hard to improve red side days, brook trout, and Atlantic salmon habitat. Although Ontario Streams is known for habitat restoration, for me, our greatest accomplishment has always been and continues to be providing opportunities for young professionals, some getting the first working experience in the environmental field with us. I have watched as so many Ontario Streams staff develop professionally then moved on to careers in government, NGOs, conservation authorities, and consulting firms over the years. And although I hate seeing them leave, I am also very happy for them and pleased to have been able to provide them with the work experience. Having said that, I also need to acknowledge the learning opportunities our staff have provided me. With every new employee comes fresh ideas, a new outlook, and new collaborations with exa existing staff. I must admit that much of Ontario Stream's growth and mine as well has been driven by our hardworking staff. Although it sounds cliche, Ontario Streams is not just an organization, but very much a family. Past and present staff remain friends decades after moving on. For me, this just shows how working together in a supportive atmosphere can build friendships and a rewarding work experience. Thank you for 25 years, and I'm looking forward to many more. Thank you for that, Doug, and we'll pass it back to you to speak about the 2020 financials. Thank you. So uh, just a uh, heads up for everybody here. This is our 2021 AGM. We will be talking about our work in 2021, but we always present our financials for the 2020 uh, fiscal year. So starting on the left-hand side, you can see our expense breakdown where we have uh, $296,000 was spent on human resources. That was four full-time employees and six um, part-time staff that worked for approximately 20 weeks during the year. Uh, we spent uh, $37,000 on trees and shrubs. Equipment and supplies is $19,000. Insurance, professional fees, and other costs are listed there. So our total project expenditures were $377,000. On the right, you can see our total revenue with grants and gifts at $307,000, professional services, $132,000. We received $2,300 of $63 uh, in individual donations from individuals. 
and uh, interest and other income was $75,000 for a total value of $518,000. Uh, in the, the center pie graph, you can see that our core business activities accounted for 82% of our expenditures, while 15% was for administration and 2.1% was for fundraising. And in 2019, we became a registered charity we saw many new funding avenues which opened to us and led our grants and gifts revenue to almost doubling in 2020 from 2019. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all of that, Doug. We are now going to turn things over to Crystal, one of our project biologists, and she is going to provide some overview of our 2021 highlights from our field season. Thanks, Kat. Uh, hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Crystal Athanasiu, and I am project biologist and field supervisor here at Ontario Streams. Today, I'm going to share a brief overview of some of the highlights of our work this year in 2021. Uh, but before I get started, Kat has created a short video outlining the various types of projects uh, Ontario Streams is involved in. So take it away, Kat. All right. Ontario Streams is a nonprofit charity. Oh. Oh, just some technical difficulties. One moment. Based in Ontario Streams is a nonprofit charity based in York Region. We lead habitat restoration work across the Greater Toronto Area and beyond. Here's a showcase of some of the various projects and programs we run during our field season. We are a leader in stream restoration work, which often looks like securing trees to riverbanks to combat erosion. In a typical year, we install about 40 in-stream structures, such as the one here on the Rouge River. We also conduct electrofishing surveys, where we carefully use electricity to temporarily stun fishes. Once the fishes are stunned, we collect them and record their measurements to compile a database of what fishes are found in a given location. After we log the data, the fish are returned back to their habitat. We collaborate with many partners on the Lake Ontario Atlantic Salmon Restoration Program. The hope is to bring back a self-sustaining population of Atlantic salmon into Lake Ontario where they have been considered locally extinct for over a hundred years. Through our in-stream incubation research and classroom hatcheries, we typically release over 10,000 Atlantic salmon fry every year to help rebuild their population. We also support mapping projects with municipalities. Our Geographic Information System Specialist focuses on wetland mapping to help better understand the plant species in our local wetlands. We lead many other restoration projects too. We usually plant over 5,000 trees a year. We collect garbage from sensitive habitats, restore local wetlands, and we remove detrimental blockages in rivers. In addition, we lead outreach programs for community groups and corporate teams to get volunteers outdoors. We connected with over 1,200 community members in 2021 to foster community action to protect our local habitats. Hopefully this video has provided some insight to Ontario's dreams, where our mission is to promote the protection and rehabilitation of Ontario's streams, rivers and wetlands through education and community action. We hope that you will join us on this mission to improve and protect our valuable water resources in Ontario through learning more about our local habitats, volunteering and donating to Ontario's streams. For more information about Ontario's streams, check out our website or our social media pages. Ontario. All right, thanks, Kat. Uh, that video is a great example of the work Kat has produce, pr been producing since she came on as outreach coordinator with the support of the Ontario Australian Foundation. We're really looking forward to sharing more great educational con content like this in the coming year. Okay, so onto this map, uh, it shows the outlines of over 20 watersheds that we have worked in this year which includes on the ground restoration projects, environmental outreach programming, GIS mapping, and our involvement in strategic planning. 
Next slide. Our project planning and implementation often focuses on three sensitive species that live here in Ontario. The red side dace is listed both provincially and federally as an endangered species. With over 80% of Canada's red side dace population living in the GTA, Ontario Streams has been focusing on protection and rehabilitation of its habitat for over 25 years. Atlantic salmon are the only salmon species native to Lake Ontario. Many factors have led these fish to these fish dying off or being extirpated from the Lake Ontario watershed in the late 1800s. Ontario Streams is one of many organizations working to rehabilitate its historical habitat restore healthy population by stocking eggs and young fry and to contribute to strategic planning. And finally, brook trout are another sensitive species that are an excellent indicator of the health of our water. They're extremely sensitive to water quality changes, changes in land use like urban development and the impending risks from climate change. By focusing on the, these areas where sensitive species live or once lived, we're contributing to the rehabilitation and protection of the habitat of many other species, not just these fish. Next slide. Our Atlantic Salmon Program works closely with the members of the Lake Ontario Atlantic Salmon Restoration Park Program. This year, we coordinated a fish passage assessment for Lake Ontario Atlantic Salmon Rivers and Streams. We also released 11,652 six month old fry using our in-stream incubation method, which mimics the natural habitat and egg would develop in, in the wild. On the top left photo, you can see the eggs being installed into the incubation tubes this past February. On the far right photo, the incubati incubation tubes are being filled with gravel and eggs and are ready to be buried. The center bottom photo shows a sack fry. This is the next stage of growth once they hatch from those eggs and before they develop into the fry that you can see on the bottom right hand photo. In May, once these fish reach that fry stage on the bottom right, we count our survival rate and release them uh, from those tubes back into the stream. This year, our survival rate was up. It was almost 40%, which is about five times higher than the natural survival rate to this life stage in the wild. In addition, uh, volunteer students experienced the same process in a fish tank hatchery in their classrooms. For those classrooms that could not participate because of the pandemic, we streamed the process live on YouTube for over six months, which we actually had a few hundred videos, uh, viewers tune in to watch. Next slide. Ontario Streams only employs a handful of hardworking and dedicated people. In order for us to achieve these great project results, we rely on our board of directors, our partners, our funders, and most especially our very enthusiastic volunteers. I'll go into more detail on these numbers on the following slides, but you can see here that over 550 volunteers helped us to plant more than 6,000 trees, remove three quarters of an acre of invasive European buckthorn, and remove over 180 bags of litter from our local rivers and green spaces. In addition, our incredible summer staff built 45 habitat structures to protect and rehabilitate our streams and removed 26 blockages causing barriers to fish movement and flooding. These are just a few of our achievements that I'll talk about today. Uh, more details will be able to be found in our 2021 annual report, which will come out next year. Next slide. This year, we cleaned litter from almost 30 hectares of natural areas. Some of our more interesting finds include 12 tires, six lawn chairs, three bikes, and a longboard, and uh, a pair of dentures. <laughs> Next slide. As a part of our rehabilitation projects, we also work to naturalize the land around streams. This often includes removal of invasive species like the European buckthorn. These before and after photos were taken on a day when our staff removed over 10,000 seedlings, preparing a site to be planted with more beneficial native trees and shrubs. Another removal method we use is called collaring or girdling. This cuts the flow of nutrients to the crown of the tree on larger and harder to remove trees. In the center photo, you can see the lighter area the arrow is pointing to. This is where bark has been removed. These trees won't survive the winter and can be removed more easily next spring. 
Next slide. For a few months in the summer, our attention turns to construction. All of our restoration work is completed by hand using hand tools. This way we can mitigate the negative impact our presence may have in these sensitive habitats. Brush bundling is one of our more common techniques we use to rehabilitate streams. This method uses the principle of bioengineering, which means using natural materials and live plants instead of human-made materials. Every year, we're lucky enough to have hundreds of Christmas trees donated to us to use as a part of these brush bundles. The European buckthorn we remove also makes a great material that is readily available from our invasive species removal projects. This technique of brush bundling sounds exactly like its name describes. We use brush in the form of Christmas trees or buckthorn and bundle it in an area of the stream that has degraded. A good example of this degradation can be seen on the photo on the left. The center photo shows the brush bundled together and secured to the bank using small anchors with cable to hold it all in place. The photo on the right shows what this bank looked like three years after the structure was built. It's very similar to what the bank would have looked like before the degradation happened in the first place. There's plenty of fish habitat in, for in, and habitat for insects in the form of woody material at the water's edge, and the whole stream bank is secured in place with native vegetation. Next slide. So this may seem contradictory to what I just said about woody material being great material habitat for fish, uh, but sometimes there's such a thing as too much of a good thing. When this happens, fish can no longer move through their habitat to seek feeding or spawning areas. Habitat can degrade more quickly because the water is held back and flooding can cause a risk in urban areas. This year we removed 26 detrimental blockages like this making sure that that wonderful woody debris remained in as a part of the ecosystem, but in a less damaging way. Next slide. In the spring and the fall, when we can't work in the stream because the fish are building nests and laying eggs, we plant trees. Uh, this year was one of our record high years, planting over 6,365 native trees and shrubs. These plants have so many benefits to more than just the fish we're concerned about. They clean our air and water, they cool our cities, they feed pollinators, birds, and other wildlife, and of course they stabilize the streams our wonderful fish friends live in. Photo on the right is a site in Richmond Hill we planted on Earth Day in 2018. I like this site because you can walk through a newly naturalized area right beside a baseball diamond where the grass is mowed and experience the difference that these plants make. There are more birds, more insects, and flowers. Seeing this biodiversity in the, middle of the in the middle of the city is a very exciting result of our work. Okay, now I'm gonna pass it back to Kat. Thanks everyone for listening, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you all in the new year. Thank you for sharing all of those highlights, Crystal. Next up, we are going to hear from Corey, who is our GIS, it's Geographic Information System Specialist, and he will do an overview of Ontario Streams GIS project. So over to Corey. Thanks, Kat. So if you want to move to the next slide. So Ontario Streams GIS Department engages in a variety of projects. This year, our work focused on wetland mapping, vascular plant and vegetation community mapping, work with species at risk, as well as some support and technical assistance on other projects as needed. Next slide, please. Using mainly aerial imagery, this year we mapped nearly 20,000 uh, 20, wetland communities. This covered just shy of 16,000 hectares of wetlands. With the most recent imagery, we created an up-to-date map of all the current wetlands in York region. Using older imagery, we also noted wetland gains, losses, and degradations that have occurred between 1999 and 2020. In conjunction with this, we've produced from our wetland updates, or sorry, in conjunction with this, our O's certified team also inventoried 180 hectares of wetlands on public lands. The shape files produced from our wetland updates are shared with relevant municipalities, conservation authorities, and the province. This helps to ensure all interested parties have the most up-to-date information. Next slide, please. Uh, for vascular plant surveys, we did, we surveyed over, uh, we surveyed 364 hectares of public land. 
where we mapped out 155 distinct vegetation communities. This included 122 wetland and 27 upland communities. Of the 397 vascular plant species identified in these communities, 98 of them are regionally rare or uncommon, and one is fe uh, federally endangered. Our vascular plant work helps to guide best land use practices. This includes mapping invasive species so they can be monitored and hopefully removed, as well as providing background for forest management plans so they can avoid sensitive natural heritage features and significant communities and plants. Next slide. The GIS work we do also assists in managing data on species at risk and guiding our field work. Reconnaissance with current aerial imagery saves countless hours of field work time and enhances our capabilities and capacity. This includes vernal pool mapping, Jefferson salamander monitoring, and managing data on the red side dates. We also assist with other project planning and support as needed. Next slide, please. While some of our reporting is internal to relevant parties, we are very excited that our State of the Wetlands report on the City of Toronto, which was done in 2020, will be published in the coming months. Additionally, our work from this year will result in a State of the Wetlands report for York Region that will be made public hopefully sometime in 22. Thank you, Kat. All right, so for our next portion, we are going to be looking at uh, handing out some awards uh, and recognizing all of the different partners and people uh, that work together to help Ontario Streams succeed. Uh, I do want to start though by acknowledging that the work that Ontario Streams does is on the traditional territory of many First Nations, including the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Huron-Wendat, the Mississaugas of the Credit, and so many more. First Nations people, they were the first stewards of the land. Uh, they were the first caretakers, making sure that they were doing things sustainably and taking care of our land and water resources. And so as we do our restoration work on this land, um, it's just a good time to reflect on those original stewards and how we are all working together to really uh, promote stewardship here in Ontario. So I do want to start with our first award, which is a surprise to Steve. Uh, and Steve is one of our recipients of the 2021 Volunteer Award. Uh, Steve has dedicated his life to the field of ecology and in particular developing avenues for awareness of natural features around us and providing guidance and experience to students of botany. Steve has been working with Ontario Streams for about seven years. Uh, so since 2015, he has volunteered this huge wealth of expertise to Ontario Streams and for over a dozen of our early professionals starting their careers here at Ontario Streams. Uh, so thank you so much, Steve, for everything you do for Ontario Streams. Uh, and thank you again for being one of our speakers today. Next up, another volunteer award is going to BMW Group Canada. Um, BMW Group Canada, their office is at Major Mackenzie in 404, so they're right in York Region, and they approached us earlier this year looking to give back to their local community. Originally, the plan was to do an Earth Day tree planting event uh, with them. However, due to the ongoing pandemic, we did have to put that on pause and instead we ran a lunch and learn with them. But they were still so committed to getting on the ground and giving back to the community. And this past fall, we were able to coordinate four stewardship events uh, through our corporate stewardship program with BMW. And they had over 94 staff members come out uh, to plant trees. And in total, they planted 962 trees in our Dawn and Rouge watershed. And just to put that into perspective, uh, the BMW employees planted about 20% of all of the trees that we planted this fall. Uh, so a really big thank you to BMW Group Canada for coming out and being so committed to helping our small nonprofit plant all of these trees and really leave that legacy giving back uh, to their local environment here in York Region. So Emma's on the call today, so if you'd like to just say thank you to Emma and BMW Group, that would be wonderful. 
We also had another really stellar volunteer group come out from Wasserman, which is a talent management company with an office in downtown Toronto. On October 7th, they held a serve day and they closed down all of their office offices around the world, uh, which was 21 offices uh, where they shut their doors and they took everyone out to go give back to the community and participate in some community service. So for our event here with the Toronto office, we had a full day out in Brampton on Fletcher's Creek. And Fletcher's Creek is home to the endangered Redside Dace. Uh, so the work that Wasserman did uh, there around Fletcher's Creek is really having a great impact on those endangered Redside Dace. This team of 38 staff members planted 395 shrubs. A lot, a lot of trees got in the ground in that one day. As well, they went above and beyond and picked up seven garbage bags full of litter from in and around the stream, as well as some construction equipment that had been left behind as well. So all around great energy coming from this team uh, and we are happy to see them come out and spend this big international day with us at Ontario Streams. We also this year are awarding a 2021 Stewardship Award to Upper Cold Creek Farm. Upper Cold Creek Farm is located in Vaughan and it has Purpleville Creek running through it. Ontario Streams has been working with Upper Cold Creek Farm for about two decades, protecting the important brook trout and red side dace habitat from the impacts of farming operations and further improving these habitats through tree and shrub planting and bank stabilization projects as well. Lots going on here. Uh, and we uh, originally were working with the Ministry of Northern Development, Mines, Natural Resources and Forestry. Uh, at the time, of course, it was called uh, Ministry of Natural Resources uh, back in 1996. That's when we started uh, to install some fencing to keep the cattle out of the stream. Following that, in 1997, through our partnership with the Ministry of Natural Resources, Ontario Streams continued working on the farm, planting trees and shrubs, and stabilizing all of these eroding banks. This work continued through 1998 and 1999, planting more and more trees and shrubs, and helping install about 500 meters of electric fencing. Since then, the stream has naturally moved on the property and large sections of the cattle fencing were removed and undermined by the stream. So we returned back in 2020 uh, to continue working with Upper Cold Creek Farm to install new electric fencing, replacing the old damaged uh, fencing and protecting a larger reach of stream. In the past two years, we've continued to work in partnership with the owners of the farm, uh, that is uh, David and Gillian, and we are working together to keep stabilizing banks, and over the past two years, we've planted more than a thousand trees and shrubs along the stream. So I do want to thank Upper Cold Creek Farm for this very long-standing relationship that we've had, really focusing on um, um, rebuilding this habitat for our endangered red side dace and other animals that use this stream. So I believe Jillian is on the call today. So again, if anyone would like to say thank you to Jillian uh, for being such a wonderful uh, partner and steward for this red side dace. And then lastly, we are awarding our 2021 partnership award to the Toronto Zoo's Great Lakes program. And Ontario Streams has been working with the Great Lakes program for many, many years. <laughs> the Great Lakes program has been doing a lot uh, and just right um, in 2021, making a lot of adaptations to keep uh, improving their stewardship and outreach. Uh, in addition to the annual in-class outreach delivery, the Great Lakes program has completed multiple projects to support aquatic species at risk conservation, including the development and launch of a new video series focusing on the red side dace, uh, which was in partnership with us at Ontario Streams. We are also working together to develop red side dace fo focused infographics for the coming months, so keep an eye out for those. 
We've got some other highlights from 2021 as well. Uh, they worked in partnership with Credit Valley Conservation to install school rain gardens. They've been live streaming all over the place uh, with an interview session for Finns Magazine for World Oceans Day. Uh, as well as installing this mural in the photo in Brampton to raise awareness of the sensitive red side dace habitat. The Great Lakes program has also been actively promoting aquatic species at risk conservation on social media with monthly Instagram live videos, Facebook live sessions, Twitter, and of course, TikTok content. So you can go check out those social media pages. I believe they're Great Lakes program. This partnership really strengthens these conservation projects and leads to greater impacts for species and their habitat. We are so grateful for this relationship and we look forward to many more projects to come. Uh, so again, thank you so much uh, to the Great Lakes program. Mary Kate is on the call today. So if you'd like to give a little shout out there, uh, that would be wonderful. We do have physical awards to provide to all of our award recipients and they will hopefully be mailed out a little later next week. Uh, so you'll have something to show off uh, all of your wonderful work uh, and accomplishments. Okay, so again, thank you to all of our award recipients. Well, we have so many more people to thank, so we'll keep going here. We, of course, have to thank our wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, financial supporters. Um, none of our work would be possible without these partnerships through municipalities, the provincial government, federal government, as well as lots of private foundations. Uh, so we are, are so thankful to all of these partners uh, in helping us get all of this very vital conservation work done. And of course, we've got volunteers too. Uh, this year, we had 557 community volunteers come out to about 25 in-person volunteer events that we had, whether that was tree planting, garbage cleanup, Atlantic salmon stocking. We have so many wonderful volunteers coming and supporting this work. In total, 2,365.5 five uh, volunteer hours were donated through our corporate stewardship program, community, um, volunteers, and students. Uh, so we are so thankful for having this support to get the work done, uh, because of course our team of seven uh, would not be able to accomplish all of this work without all of this volunteer support. We also launched our, or relaunched an updated version of our corporate stewardship program this year. Uh, and we had four different organizations come and spend eight uh, events with us. Uh, so that includes BMW Group Canada, Turner and Townsend, SAP and Wasserman. Uh, and again, thank you to these teams who trusted us to take them outdoors, to give back to the community and do some team building as well. Uh, so it was a, a great time at each of these events, meeting all of these different uh, corporate teams and getting to know them and seeing their passion for the environment. And even more outreach partners and participants. So we were able to really boost a lot of our outreach programming this year. Um, we connected with many, many different groups uh, to lead uh, community programs, uh, whether it's in person or virtually just connecting to these groups and their participants. And this year we also had many educational programs. So we connected virtually and in person with many different schools, uh, big list right here. I think it's about 11 schools that we were able to connect with uh, and teach them more about their local environment, uh, whether it was just a virtual programming or on the ground in-person stewardship, uh, like tree planting with a few high school groups. Uh, so we hope to, to even expand this list even more next year and continue to connect with students. And then we've got some more community supporters too. And these are our uh, community partners that uh, have, act, have allowed access to land or resources or equipment and have just been all around wonderful in getting this conservation work done. We also, of course, want to thank everyone who has donated online or took a course in support of Ontario Stream, such as our electrofishing uh, certification this past year. 
And last, uh, we've got here our Ontario Streams Board of Directors, and we wouldn't be able to accomplish most of this work, any of this work, uh, without them and their guidance uh, as our board, helping us grow and um, lead to new opportunities uh, all around Ontario. And then, of course, we have our 2021 Habitat Technicians, so we hire uh, six uh, young people every year uh, to help us throughout our field season doing all kinds of work. You can see them holding a bunch of different tools here. Uh, and these six uh, are just really, really awesome. Uh, this past year, uh, we got so much work done, such great energy coming from this team. Uh, we've rehired two of them already. Uh, and We'll see about rehiring more later. Uh, but we had just such a great summer with them. Uh, if you or anyone you know is interested in working for us as a habitat technician for next field season, uh, our job posting will go up early next year, either January or February. Uh, so keep an eye out on our website for that. And we do have another little video to share uh, just to give some background. Ontario Streams didn't have an outreach coordinator for a few years before I was hired back in February. Uh, and since then, we've been really trying to revamp our outreach and educational programs to reach new audiences and try some new things. Uh, so this little video is uh, just a little overview of what we've been up to with this, um, this program. Ontario Streams has been developing many new outreach programs and initiatives to engage community members with their local environment. We build these connections through in-person and virtual programming. During our stewardship events, we teach community members about their local habitat and the importance of protecting our valuable water resources. The group contributes to stewardship projects such as tree planting, garbage cleanups, and invasive species management. We run programs for corporate teams, school classes, and community groups. Our new corporate stewardship program launched this past year and we had eight corporate teams join us to strengthen their team building while giving back to the community. We also offer programming for school classes and student volunteer groups, including stewardship opportunities and activities through the Specialist High Skills Major program. This year, we also adapted our outreach programming for virtual delivery. We led classroom programs for kindergarten students all the way to high school to teach students about their local species at risk and everyday actions we all can do to support the environment. In addition, we have created many media resources with various partners to increase awareness about local wildlife and their habitats. We partnered with the Toronto Zoo's Great Lakes program on a video series about the endangered red side dace and how Ontario Streams is working to restore their habitat. We also work with many municipalities, including the City of Richmond Hill, where we co-created a video about the trees and habitats in the city. To learn more about the outreach programs that we offer and how to book them, check out our website and social media profiles. All right, uh, so hopefully you, you got a little taste of what we are up to and, and what's to come and uh, a good transition there into what's on the horizon. Uh, we want to continue to grow our outreach program. Uh, since I started in mid-February, we've hosted 44 events uh, or hosted or attended 44 events with over 1,200 community members. So we've got a, a very good reach and we're very happy with that. But of course, there's always room to grow. We're going to continue uh, to book virtual presentations for school groups and community groups. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. And if you know anyone interested in receiving a presentation, you can send them our way. Uh, we are also going to start booking for corporate stewardship program for the spring of 2022. And then we'll start booking that uh, next early next year. Uh, and again, same thing for our specialist high skills major program, which is a, a program for grade 11 and 12 students who are looking to go straight into the workplace. Uh, so we offer a program to give them some hands on skills for a field in, uh, in the environment. 
We've also got some other research projects coming up, uh, one with Jefferson Salamanders uh, working with the town of Caledon. We are looking to study the eco hydrology of their breeding sites and develop an eco passage. Uh, so just trying to learn more about where these salamanders like to breed, how we can protect those habitats and the salamanders. You may hear about other municipalities shutting down roads at certain times of year to let salamanders and other animals cross. Uh, so we are hoping to do uh, something a little more permanent uh, and working on developing an eco passage that will be available to the salamanders to safely get uh, across these roads. We are also continuing our work with Atlantic salmon and working on a fish passage strategy for our Lake Ontario streams. Uh, we have been involved in different projects in the past uh, to help ease the migration of our Atlantic salmon and other migrating fish. Uh, in the top photo there, that's at uh, the Humber River at Etambule Park. So you can see way on the far left, there's a piece of the waterfall that looks a little different. Uh, and that's a notch where the salmon can jump up a little bit easier. Uh, so looking at some more ideas like that. And we will continue our support of the Coalition for the West Credit, which is a community movement trying to protect uh, the, the water, the resources, and the wildlife that are using the West Credit. Uh, so there's lots of information about them online, but one of the, the primary goals there is looking at um, this air and wastewater treatment plant and how that will be affecting the very sensitive brook trout. Uh, and they have lots of information online that we can get uh, more connected with and, and see how we can all get involved with that project. Lastly, Giving Tuesday is coming up quickly. It is on November 30th. Uh, so hopefully in the next week or two, we'll have a little more information about what Giving Tuesday is going to look like for Ontario streams this year. Uh, so of course, we would love your support on Giving Tuesday, as well as we, we would ask you to consider being a monthly donor to Ontario streams uh, and offer support through learning more about local conservation work and also volunteering when you can. Uh, all of those actions are, are so helpful for a nonprofit like us, uh, helping and, and learning more and giving when you can. I would like to thank you all for joining us today at our annual general meeting. I know it's a, a lot of information and hopefully uh, it was uh, something new for you to learn about Ontario streams and the work that's done uh, here in Ontario, learning about those rivers that we work on, the wetlands uh, from Steve, so much to learn uh, just about our local environment and the things that we all can do to protect it. If you've got questions, feel free to send us an email at info at ontariostreams.on.ca and we'll be happy to connect with you through that. Uh, we've got our website there with the link to donate if you are interested and able, as well as keep an eye out for hopefully in the spring we'll be able to run some public volunteering events. Uh, and then lastly, we've got all our social media pages there at Ontario Streams on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. If you've got any questions, feel free to post them here in the chat and we can hang on for a little bit longer to see what comes up. Uh, I do see Brian just doing some promo there. Uh, tomorrow we will be co-leading a walk with Lost Rivers Toronto at Etienne Brule Park uh, in Toronto at 2 p.m. Uh, meeting just near the old mill entrance. Uh, so you can check out our social media pages for more information about that. Let's see, I see lots of thank yous. Uh, so thank you all for tuning in and spending your Saturday morning this way. Uh, and I encourage you to maybe take some time to go outside today and see what you've got in the, the nature around you. Usually we do lead a, a guided hike during our AGM, but today might have to be a little more self-guided, learning more about your own neighborhood. <laughs>